up guys, welcome to another episode of Speed Sim. My name's Andre. And I'm e House. And today we have kind of a fun topic. Um, our topic is, what would we tell our early years of airsoft playing yeah. kids what not to do? Yes. Uh, this is kind of, uh, I don't know how I thought of this subject. I think it's because we had a bunch of new people uh, at the field recently. And just, I was thinking back to when I started, I'm like, man, I did a lot of dumb shit. Right. So... <laughs> So I guess I thought that, I'm like, man, so what would I go back and change? What new player mistakes would I try to avoid or tell other people to avoid? All right, so for as far as I go, I mean, I'm kind of I'm kind of kind of just focusing on myself, not because I don't, I don't I watch kids do stuff, but for the most part, I'm just thinking back to when when I first started. And the first thing I want to point out is don't buy a gun that you obviously can't wield. <laughs> <laughs> when yeah. I was, when I first started, my gun was a full metal, full wood M14 by UTG. I can't wield that, my 14 year old self, and I had a hard time using it. So I see other kids, you know, they buy these like really beefed up guns, like even like some of the easy ones for us to wield, like the G&G's full metal bodies, they obviously can't wield them. Yeah, you, know, you got a, a small child you know, like, wielding I mean, a full length M16. Yeah, and like, they can't do it. Don't, don't do this to yourself. Favorite example I've ever seen of that, and this, backing this up, is uh, our teammate Ben bought an M240. <laughs> you know what an M240 is, it's, it's a huge. big gun. And he, he bought one for a steal because some like 12 or 13 year old kid literally half your size bought it. So. <laughs> Don't, yeah, don't buy guns that, are, that you obviously can't wield. Don't do that to yourself. You're just going to hate it and you're going to sell it for dirt cheap because you can't wield it. A lot of people forget that things have weight, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Like me. <laughs> I was not ready for that. Uh, in that same kind of vein, uh, I'm actually going to go in... Uh, you talked about the guns. I'm talking about gear. So many people starting out see all these loadouts that people are doing online and they see what people are doing how people are building their kits and then they buy the most absurdly huge tactical vest or plate carrier yeah. and they load it with so many pouches carrying so much crap and they do that because they think oh i could i'm gonna need all this stuff i'm gonna want all this stuff on me and then they're gonna get out into the field especially if their first time playing is somewhere like hunter's creek they're gonna get out there and just immediately hate their life. Yeah, yeah. I I made this mistake. I had a fully loaded plate carrier with all kinds of crap all mounted to the vest. I used to own a full uh, CRAS vest. Okay. Those things are massive. It's like almost IOTV style. Oh god. So yeah, uh, don't don't do that. Don't overload yourself on gear. Stick to the bare essentials, stick to what you need. If you're just starting out, uh, buy a couple of high caps if you're just doing open plays and figure out what you need from there. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, after about the third or fourth time you hike around with a CRAS on, you decide that you're never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to follow that up, I used to, I was really big into Black Hawk Down, and I had bought myself <laughs> a, a full, like, plate carrier. It wasn't even with, it had to have no molly gear at all. It was oh. just straight, just a body the armor. slick carrier? Yep, just a slick carrier, and I filled that with, um, really, pl uh, like, not, they're dummy plates. Yeah. I had dummy plates on the front and on the back, and I put it on first, and then I put... A plate carrier on top of that loaded with 10 bags and a helmet. Never do that again. No. <laughs> that's not the... not, especially when it's really hot out and you gotta hike up a hill. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope. Don't do that to yourself. You're gonna hate oh, your life. Oh, God. Yeah, that was great. I had a two-day assault pack, too, with a hydration carrier. <laughs> oh, don't, I kids, don't do that. It's a terrible idea. Yeah, unless you're going to like a two-day game or unless, something, yeah. but you, I was you not. Know. It was a one-day little skirmish. <laughs> Mel said for the win. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself, kids. Uh Speaking of Milsim and going out to two-day games, uh, don't rush into going to your first Milsim game. Yes. Uh, there, I feel like there's some people who see all the videos online and they see how cool it looks and they say, oh, I really want to go to one of these big 40-hour Milsim events. I want to go to Milsim West as oh my God, first Milsim event. Milsim West didn't exist when I started, no. so I didn't go to a Milsim West event until 2016, when I'd already been playing the better part of a decade. Uh, so, don't, but I have seen people, I at Milsim West, I saw it, 
people go to Milson West. It was their first ever Milson or national event, and they just weren't ready. They didn't read the tax op. They didn't know what they were doing. Uh, so there's a mistake in and of itself. New players, not everything is always going to be explained to you, and if it is, it might be too late. Read whatever rule set completely before you go to a field or an event if it's available and published. Know the rules before you go to the field because if you get to the field and it turns out, oh, by the way, you need full face protection, but you didn't realize that, now you either have to hope that there's face protection you can borrow or face protection you can buy. And if there's not, guess you're not playing. Yep. So read the rule set and be prepared for whatever you're getting yourself into. I started this by saying, don't go to Milsim West as your first Milsim event. I guess maybe not that advice necessarily, but go to Milsim West or any other event, reading up the details, talking to people who've gone, preferably going with a group that has gone before, and be thoroughly prepared for what you're getting yourself into, no matter where you're going. Right. Next up, um, don't let your friends talk you into buying a gun. Okay, I did that. My friend, we still do that. No, no, no. This is totally different. Like, we we make bad decisions, but in a good way. <laughs> Back then, we they talked me into buying a gun with bad intentions. Okay, so if all your friends run M4s or P90s or what have you, and they say you can't buy that certain gun because they already own it, and you have to buy something different, don't listen to them. Buy the gun you want, because that's how I ended up with the M14. <laughs> Don't yeah, that is that. that is something <laughs> that terrible idea. And a more practical concern that, that rather than just not ending up with a gun you like is you can share mags if a lot of you have the same gun. True. Very so true. people kind of get into this mentality of I want to be a snowflake and have my special thing that no one else has. Not gonna happen. Especially with an M4. Yeah. What everyone has M4s. <laughs> yeah. So just buy what you like, buy whatever you like, yeah. and don't care about being... Because that's how you end up with a gun you can't wield. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Prime example. Don't do that. <laughs> Speaking of buying things, uh, here's a piece of advice I wish I'd known. I got into this mentality when I was starting out oh where I bought all the kind of cheap clone guns for a while first, and this was back when most of them weren't good. Most of them still aren't good, but yep. a lot of the popular ones are pretty decent. Uh, and I bought so many crappy guns thinking, I don't want to spend $250 on a Tokyo Marui or Classic Army or G&G. &G. G, g was like just starting at the time. Uh, I don't want to spend that much money on one of these when I could pay $100 for a 400 FPS uh, A and K S system. Yeah, and number one, read the fine print because you see 400 FPS. Oh my God, it with shoots so hard. Yeah, with point two, point one twos, <laughs> and then it's just crap and it falls apart and it breaks and you're gonna spend more money fixing or replacing a crappy gun than if you had just done your research, taken more time, and bought something higher quality. Now, luckily these days, a lot of the budget guns are pretty damn good. I mean, the G&G &G Combat Machine series is still going strong. Yep. Uh, Classic Army just came out with a new Sportline series I haven't gotten to play with, but that looks pretty decent. SEMA AKs are way too good for how much they cost. Mm -hmm. uh, but point is, if you're considering buying something that's cheap and kind of unknown versus something that's maybe a little more money, but you know what you're getting, save up and it's worth it. Same vein, um, when it comes to eye protection, don't cheap out on eye protection. Oh, yes. Um, I first started off and I bought some Ed Dicks and it says anti-fog. They're not anti-fog. Don't listen to Walmart or Dicks. They don't tell the truth. No, they didn't. And it was the worst kind of eye protection too. It was like a, almost a full face mask. It came down to like just to the jawbone here. But yeah, it didn't around. go to the cheeks or anything. It was rubber ear protectors and it was garbage. And then my friends, they ended up with those uh, mesh goggles, not the good mesh goggles. Oh, yeah. The bad kind where the wired As far mesh. as I'm concerned, there are no good mesh goggles. Well, but. I mean, the stamp steel is better than some of this wired mesh. But regardless, don't buy the wired mesh ones because, I mean, as much as it doesn't fog, you can lose an eye still because they've broken up in my face before. <laughs> so yep. don't do that. So don't skip out on eye protection. That's number one. When you buy eye protection, Buy a die or buy the, uh, what do you got, the ESS Influx? The ESS AVS Influx, yeah. the, uh, I mean, the Arena Flak Jacks, you can get those pretty cheap yeah, still. Yeah, those are pretty good too. Uh, you Just can don't get, out. that's yeah. all I'm trying to say. Don't get something out. that's rated properly, full seal, follows all the rules of your field. All right. Do that. Uh, 
Speaking of fields, I have a piece of advice, and I'm going to sound like a massive hypocrite on this because this is kind of how I got my start, but don't ever play in an area that is not private property well out of public view. Uh, there were like one or two times when I was starting out, I, I played on a buddy's private property when I was first starting, mm -hmm. and that was his private property out in the woods. No one was bothering us. That's one thing. But then there were one or two times where I... When I was starting, I played at a friend's house who said, oh, I've got woods. Well, I would get there and it was not woods that were secluded and away from everybody. It was woods that you could clearly see into from like the street oh. and that you could shoot into the street from by accident. Okay. So there was actually one incident where very fortunately I I had the police call, well not I, but I mean it was a group of us, but I was young and stupid. I think it was like 15 or 16. I was a stupid kid at this point. And we had the police called on us. Luckily the police knew what we were doing because the neighbors called and said, hey, you know, you have these kids playing airsoft and they're, you know, being careless. And we had the police called on us, nothing happened. We didn't get in any real trouble. They just told us stop playing, but that was my wake-up call. I never did that again, obviously. I'm lucky I was able to continue to live to never do that again, because if the call had been a little different, who knows what would have happened. So I learned that lesson the hard way so that you don't have to. So when I tell you to only play at sanctioned fields or private, completely private property, there's a reason I'm telling you that. It's because I've been there and I've seen how shitty it can go, or at least a taste of how shitty it can go, if you don't play on proper areas. I've seen it, I've lived it, now there's plenty of fields around me, don't have to do it, there's plenty of fields around most people, or there should be someone you know with private property you have permission to play on, totally out of public view. I can add the same, uh, same experience. Um, I went to a field, they said it was private property. I get there. It was a public park with jungle gym and everything. And we started playing because there was further away in the back. And I thought, what's the worst that could happen? So I started playing. And sure enough, a lady with a dog walked by. I'm like, it's time to go. And I bounced because that is not a good situation. Nothing was called on me. Nothing happened. But I was like, this is a bad situation. I need to get myself out of there. Yeah, I, I feel bounced. like the renegade type of airsoft is something that... People are afraid to admit they participated in, but a lot of us did. And now that we look back on it, we know that it was dumb and yep. we know how bad it can go. Don't so do it. that's why we have the experience to tell you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Things can get very hairy very quickly. Yeah. And you could end up getting shot. Yes, so don't. Don't do that. I don't know how I'm gonna explain this. Okay, if you own an airsoft gun, be responsible with it. Uh, don't jump on top of your roof and decide that you're gonna shoot the school, or not the school, but like the, uh, what do you call it? The neighborhood bully with him when he's driving by on his little moped. Okay, yeah, don't do that. A bad idea. Cause that's how you get shot. Yet the cops called on you. It may get arrested depending on how old you are. Don't do that. Be responsible with your guns. Put them in gun, uh, gun bags, gun cases, or even a gun safe if your dad owns one. Keep them locked away until you go to an airsoft game, or if you're just sighting it in the backyard. Don't take it onto the middle of the street like me. That's a dumb idea. <laughs> we did some dumb shit when we were kids, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, boy. So. I mean, at this point, it's all, like, at least eight or nine years in the past. Oh, so yeah, that's why yeah, we're yeah. telling you now with the benefit of being older and wiser yes. that it was really stupid. So just trust us on this. Yes. Don't learn for yourself. We learned the hard way so you don't have to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you really should treat your airsoft guns like they're real guns because if the police get called, they probably will. Yes. Here's a good one for all of you just getting into the game who think, I wish my gun shot a little farther. Oh God. Uh, first of all, do not open up your airsoft gun if you don't know what you're doing. Do not open up your airsoft gun if you don't know what you're doing. Do not open up your airsoft gun if you don't know what you're doing. I'm saying this as many times as I've done it. So. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if I kept going, you know, you might kill me, but 
I'm gonna just be honest with you. When I started out, I was one of those guys who read the forums and heard all these people talking about their sick builds. And I thought, I'm gonna build up this airsoft gun. My a and KS system at the time, because they're broken. I'm gonna build it into something sweet, do something ridiculous to it. And that did not go well at all. It went horribly. <laughs> and then I did it to my next gun, and it went equally as horribly. <laughs> so just skip it. Skip the whole process. Uh, if you insist on learning how to work on your own guns, because I did learn by messing up enough. Um, I mean, <laughs> if you insist, have someone who knows what they're doing with you. That's the best way you can do it. And or have a YouTube tutorial for your exact make and model of gun at the ready and follow it to the T with all the tools necessary. Because if you skip a single step, airsoft guns are finicky little sewing machines. And if we're talking about AEGs, and if we're talking about gas blowbacks, even worse. yeah, gas blowbacks are this combination of seals and nozzles and springs, and you can lose even a single part and fuck up the whole gun. For the record, I still use YouTube tutorials, even though I know what I'm doing, but I still make sure I reference it correctly. I do I that too. I still do it to this day, so it, it works. Yeah, it's a thing you do, because sometimes it's just a good fucking idea. Yeah. So, Learn what you're doing before you decide to open up a gun and learn by doing because you'll end up wasting a lot of time and money that way. Oh, yes. Fun example, one of our good friends who is now no longer playing airsoft, he was our neighbor, uh, brought his gun to a local shop and still couldn't fix it. He spent close to $500 having them to fix it. Ooh. Brought it to us so after he got out of the game. What did we do? We fixed it in two minutes. <laughs> so, fun fact. <sighs> Yeah, so find a good local shop, too. If there's yeah. stuff that's beyond your skill level or stuff you're not comfortable doing, I still have River City handle when I have electronic finicky stuff. I'm not good at soldering, so if I'm doing a MOSFET install, I still bring that to River City. Yep. I can take apart an M4 or an AK all day long and take it apart, put different parts in and put it back together, but once soldering gets involved, I know my limitations. <laughs> Hold up. Yeah. <clears throat> First getting into the game, Try to uh, talk to as many players as you can on the field. Don't social yourself out. Even if you're like by yourself and you want to play completely by yourself, meet some friends and mingle with each other because that's the way you come together and you play a great day for yourself. You're just gonna sit yourself in a corner and just sit on your phone, whatever social media you're doing. That's no way to have fun. No. And I see that all the time and it's, I mean, I've done it. And there's no way to play the game. Get yourself out there, talk to as many people as you want, and people that look comfortable to you, go up to them, ask them about their guns, and that's just how you get started, and you make great friends. That is true. I mean, I gotta be honest with you, when I first got into Airsoft, I didn't have a ton of friends of my own. I kind of hung out with my brother's friends. I was kind of a little more awkward as a child, uh, but then, you know, started getting into Airsoft, started meeting all these people with the same hobby, and started really getting out there, and, mm -hmm. you know, at a certain point, just practicing socialization. Yep. And that just benefited me in Airsoft and beyond. Yep. So definitely don't be afraid to socialize. Oh, they're all playing the same game. Exactly. Airsoft is a social game. You're on the same team, unless you're not. But right. then if you're not, you it get to laugh about shooting at them, right? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. kind of fun. I mean, I see tons of people saying, oh, I want to play against my friend. It's fun. I mean, I want to shoot Matt constantly. It's <laughs> great. And Kyle. Kyle's fun to shoot. Yeah, and he has those weak knees, or ankles, but you know. I've got the weak knees, so. Yeah, yeah you guys are on equal playing grounds. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but still, go out there, meet some people, play some airsoft. It's it's fun. You only want to sit there in the corner. People are not going to talk to you if you're going to sit there. Yep. They think you're awkward. Don't exactly. In the same kind of vein, I want to talk about teams. Everyone who gets into airsoft and then starts getting a little more social, inevitably, people start talking about starting or joining a team. Let me give you my biggest piece of advice for teams. I might do a whole video on this, uh, just separate from even this. I would join you in this. Yeah, like if you're gonna do an airsoft team, these people should be people that you're gonna be friends with and hang out with in and out of airsoft. Because what I've noticed is that people who build an airsoft team only around how each person performs on the field or how often they can show up to games and stuff, you end up with a bit of a mess of a group because then yes. people get resentful and people don't mesh well together, personal conflicts might arise, and I've never seen a team last long that only focuses 
on life in the game and doesn't hang out outside the game. Your airsoft team should just be your buddies you play with. Yep. You shouldn't take the game too seriously and you shouldn't make it the center of everything you do. To an extent, Gun Gamers, this media project, is kind of the center of our group of friends right now, but not really, mostly just that it's something we all put a lot of time and effort into and all enjoy doing. Yep. But we all have lives outside of this, and we all hang out. We all do stuff. Can't here. shatter the illusion. <laughs> <laughs> we all have lives outside of this. We hang out a ton. Uh, you know, we go camping. We do a bunch of other random stuff together. So don't don't revolve your airsoft team around the game. I mean, it's fun, but again, it's a game, just in the yeah. similar vein as playing a video game. Don't take yourself too seriously, because that's just how you get things messy, and like Eric said, it's just not healthy. You don't want to do that. You want to have buddies that enjoy playing airsoft, but also hang out outside of the game as well, because that's just how this works, and I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> learned that by hanging out with us. Yes. Boom. Uh, I mean, I've, after all, one of our post-game rituals is going to a local bar yeah. and just pigging out on terrible greasy bar food and drinking a lot of beer. And, and it's making great. fun of our own pictures. It's great. Oh, making fun of our own pictures is the best part. <laughs> it is, really is. It's mostly Judy. Uh, pictures with Judy. Praise always, Judy. Always end up the best. <laughs> um, That's yeah. pretty much our kind of PSA? Advice, advice, I guess I would call it like our, our advice corner. Just uh, take our, uh, what we said with a grain of salt and uh, get out there, do what you got to do. Um, once again, this has been Speed Sim. My name is Andre. And I'm E House. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. See ya.